Hi guys, it's Baby, and we're starting off a new Let's Play of Starlight Vega. We're going to be playing as uh, this brown haired girl, and I'm guessing we're either going to be able to romance this uh, demon lady or the blonde haired girl. And it is, of course, another Yuri game, so let's start it. Well, here we are. Good grief. Here we are indeed. This house looks older than dirt, and there's an abundance of that too. Wow, what a fascinating house. Fascinating isn't the word I'd use. Creepy, maybe. I wouldn't call our family inheritance creepy. Your grandfather left us this house when he died, you know. It's like a family treasure. Yeah, and he took real great care of this treasure. Who knows? Maybe we'll get lucky and your new home will be haunted. How is... Yeah, in what way is that lucky? I sigh as Melody's occult fascination rears its ugly head. And don't worry, Arya. I think it just needs a little love. See, you're lucky to have a sensible friend like Melody. Why, some new curtains. Some new paint. The removal of rotting wood. Ugh. Thanks so much for helping us out today, Melody. It's my pleasure, Mrs. Reed. Melody's my best friend, from school. She offered to stay with us the first two nights at the new house. You'll see, Aria. It won't be that different from our old house once we get settled in. Alright, girls, let's head inside. Oh, this house is really normal on the inside. Don't talk like that, Melody. A normal home is exactly what we need. Besides, you know Arya can be quite the scaredy cat. Mom! <laughs> Don't embarrass me in front of my girlfriend! Ignoring my protest, Mum opens the window and begins to allow more light into the house. The new layout will take some time to get used to, but we can work with this. Why don't you two take a look around? It'll be night soon, so you best figure out where the new bedrooms are. I look towards Melody, who's smiling as she looks around. Melody really is feeling at home here. As that thought crosses my mind, Melody suddenly grabs my hand. Come on, Arya, let's take a look around. Okay, most of my belongings won't be here for a few days. So we might as well see what's already here. As we walk through the house, Melody looks around enthusiastically. I begin to do the same, making a mental note of what the of the house's layout. As we reach the top of the stairs, we find a small window block but blocked by a thick curtain. Light floods in the room when I push it aside. I take a moment to gaze out the window. The trees are endless, with no other houses in sight. Though beautiful, the sight depresses me. I'm in the middle of nowhere, in an unknown home, with only as much stuff as we could fit in the car. To top it off, we won't have electricity for a week at the soonest, since the power company was all booked up. Uh, no electricity? S so no internet? Uh, how is she going to survive? Why couldn't Grandpa have a house out near the city or something? Living here is going to be boring. I'll just have to make the best of it. <laughs> huh? What's so funny, Melody? Hmm? I didn't say anything. That was weird. I thought I just heard someone laugh. Maybe I'm just tired. After all, it'll be night time soon. After we finish briefly from glancing through the hallways upstairs, Melody returns downstairs to help Mum. I stay upstairs, eager to find our bedrooms before nightfall. As I look around by myself, there's a feeling of unease that I can't shake, but I know it's just my mind playing tricks on me. I come to a small and unobtrusive doorway to my left. I throw it open. 
This must be my new bedroom. It's a bit cramped with all the furniture, but it's not too much smaller than my old room at my old house. This must have been Mum's room when she was younger. Finding Mum's childhood room, I feel the tension leave my body. I can't help but laugh at myself a little. Did I seriously just get worked up over nothing earlier? This place is pretty creepy, so of course I'm going to feel a little on edge. I guess I'll go tell Melody I found our room. <laughs> what the? I turn around. There's nobody there. Melody? Mum? Hello? Through one of the windows, I can see Mum out by the car, stuck in a couple of boxes. Melody is out of sight somewhere, down a hallway. I strain my ears, listening. Okay, that's creepy. I only hear wood cracking and the sound of a broom being pushed along downstairs. I suddenly feel really uneasy. It won't be like Mum... Or it wouldn't be like Mum or Melody to play a prank on me like this. Glancing around in a paranoid fashion, I sneak quietly down the hall. Is something here? A wild animal, maybe? I continue to look around the hall, but I find nothing. There is nothing out of place, and nobody who shouldn't be present. My mind really is playing tricks on me. Maybe it's the stress of leaving my old life behind, or the unease of moving into a new house? At any rate, I should try to sleep this off. I won't get anywhere acting like this. I could keep looking around tomorrow morning. The sun had already set, leaving the house completely dark. The two of us were awake in my room, in my new room, while Mum stayed down the halls in hers. Melody busied herself reading a small novel with a flashlight. I look at the cover. It's typical Melody fodder. From the picture alone, it looks like something about a vengeful spirit chasing a group of teens through a haunted house. This sort of thing doesn't really help me forget about the weird voice from earlier. If I heard it just once, I probably could have chalked it up to a trick of the wind or creaky wood. But hearing disembodied laughter twice in one day is enough to make me shiver violently. Melody, do you really believe in this stuff? In what stuff? I point at the book. Ghosts and spirits and all that. Melody holds up the book up so I can see the cover. Well, this one is just fiction. There's a really famous movie version too. I don't mean this story in particular, I just mean in general. I believe in it. I think that if people are still telling ghost stories after thousands of years, then there has to be some truth to it, right? Plus, it's a lot of fun. Isn't it more exciting to believe in the supernatural? Hmm. Is everything alright? You've been acting kind of strange since earlier. No, it's nothing. It's just... I thought I heard... Surely Melody of all people would believe me. Why does this make me so nervous? But Melody doesn't seem to be bothered at all by the house. And I didn't find anything out of the ordinary earlier when I checked around. I'm the only one who's feeling uneasy about this place. Uh, never mind, I it's nothing. It's a new house, you know? Right. I'm sure you were just to it in no time, Arya. I decide not to mention anything to Melody. It would be embarrassing to tell her and have it turn out to be nothing. After some time, we decide to go to bed. Good night, Arya. Melody turns off her flashlight as I too enter my bed. Good night. Ah. 
can't believe I just had a nightmare. I haven't had a nightmare since I was a child. Well, aren't you lucky? I hope this doesn't become a habit. I look over towards Melody, who's still sleeping soundly. As I watch Melody sleep, I realize that something is wrong. What the? Melody, who fell asleep before I did, is now hugging a very large book. It definitely seems like something she would read, but the book itself was massive. I don't recall ever seeing her bring it along to the house. Everything is making me so paranoid. I'll ask Melody about the book in the morning. I'm sure she'll... I jump out of bed as I hear the disembodied laughter for a third time. Melody! Melody, wake up! Aria? Melody looks at my face, then immediately adjusts her attitude. Aria, you look terrible. Is something wrong? As Melody goes to pick up her flashlight, she suddenly realises that she's cradling a book in her arms. Um, Aria? Where did this book come from? Wait, don't tell me. You... That book isn't yours? No. My heart does a backflip. Did you put this book in my arms while I was asleep? Why would I do that? Wait, you're trying to scare me, aren't you? I'm not! I've never seen this book before in my life! Melody begins to trace her fingers over the cover of the book, as though she's in a trance. I don't know where this book came from, but it's quite impressive. It's far older than any book I've held before, and the jewels on the cover are so realistic. Not to mention the intricate pages, and just what is this language? I've never read anything even close. Looks like a bunch of gibberish. You're right. The language is very odd. The writing in the book is almost inhuman. It has thick straps on the sides as if to lock it up. I avert my gaze as Melody continues to fawn over her new book. Is Melody so fixated that she doesn't even care how the book got there? Books don't just appear out of thin air, and that laughter I heard. I look towards Melody once more. Earlier today, when we were looking around, I heard this weird laugh. Weird? It wasn't you or Mum. It was this disembodied laughter. What? Really? I don't think I imagined it either. Once is a trick of the mind, but three times is no coincidence. I glance at Melody. She's pensive. No trace of laughter on her face. Hmm... Did anything else strange happen? A window opening and closing, or some pages of a book turning? No, there wasn't anything else. It was just a sultry sort of laugh. Hmm, sultry? Now that I think about it, the laugh did sti seem distinctly female. Hopefully it wasn't a poltergeist. Those are the ones that you usually see in horror movies. So, you believe me? Maybe it's just the light from the lamp, but she looks almost offended. Honestly, Arya, did you really think that I wouldn't believe you? She points at her stack of ghost books in her bag that she brought for the trip. Really? I shake my head. Melody puts the book down and grabs a flashlight from her bag. Well, I believe you. Anyhow, let's go. Uh... To where? To investigate, obviously. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Investigate what and how? We'll investigate who or what it was that was laughing. Are you crazy? I don't want to go and look around now. It's dark out and we don't even have electricity. But this could be my chance. Melody presses a free hand against the ghost novel she was reading earlier, glancing at me hopefully. When I told her I was moving to this house, I was happy when she offered to come and keep company with me, but... 
This isn't exactly the first time she's dragged me into chasing the occult. But it's not like we were ever actually found anything. Any. We usually just end up finding a creaky window pane or something. It'll put my mind at ease. The least I can do is go with her. Reluctantly, I get up. Jeez, alright. If nothing else, I can get it off my mind. Melody leads the way, holding the old book in one hand and her flashlight in the other. As I trail behind, we soon approach a sturdy door. That's strange. I don't remember seeing this door earlier today. Did we walk straight past it? This door doesn't match any of the others in the house, and it's pretty ornate and creepy. The closer we get to the door, the more nervous I feel. My heart pounds so violently that I'm pretty sure Melody can hear it. Even the beam from the flashlight is shaky, and looking at Melody's hands, I can see why. They're trembling almost as much as mine are. We stop outside the study, where the door is still shut. Melody looks at me before glancing at the door. Here we go. She grabs the doorknob and turns it. We enter the creepy room. Moonlight filters through the window, but it's still pretty dark. I shine the flashlight around the room. I can't explain why, but something feels off. Why do I feel so uneasy? We're not actually going to find anything in here. After all, I don't really believe in that superstitious nonsense. What's that? Huh? Melody shines her light over to... the bookshelves. Oh, look at the carvings on those books. And that book looks like it's hundreds of years old. They all look like they're hundreds of years old. Bottles of Honeywort, Brisbane, Hemlock, <laughs> Brisbane. These are all used in alchemy. What was your grandfather like? I don't know. Mum never really talked about him. I shine my flashlight around the room. There's a podium in front of the desk. It looks ancient and twisted, but is otherwise uninteresting. Whoa. What does grab my attention, however, is what is resting on top of the podium. What is that? It's so pretty. Melody, focused on the dozen, dozens of books around the room, isn't listening. There's a stone on the podium. Let's see here. <laughs> Don't touch it or pick up the gem. Well, it'll be very stupid to pick it up, so that's what we're going to do. Whoa! Huh? White hot light floods the room, stinging my eyes. Well, hello! As it dies, I hear a faint laugh. In place of the gem, a woman with long red hair and bright yellow eyes. She is tall, full-figured, full and she has horns? My saviour! Ah. Uh... The strange horned woman practically jumps on top of me, pulling me into a crushing hug. You freed me! What? What the hell is going on? She picks me up off the floor and starts spinning around. I desperately try to squirm away, but I only manage to make her grip tighter. Oh, I was trapped in that dreadful stone for so long. It was awful. But then you saved me. Let me go! Get away from her, you... you devil woman! She stiffens before releasing me so fast that I fall on the floor with a loud slap. Ow! Aha! Devil woman! You better not be talking to me that way. Uh, um... Melody, don't. Too late. She hits the horn lady on the head with the book. Hard. Ow! Disgusting little human. 
Melody, S stay away. You've got some nerve. Take this. Ah! Uh. I'm blinded again by a bright light. I feel a gust of wind rush past me and hear a loud crash. Uh. Uh, Aria, are you alright? Pain explodes from the back of my body. I pitch towards the ground, crumbling to the floor. Melody is next to me, grabbing my arm. My unfocused eyes slowly become aware of the demon girl lying on her back in a ruined bookshelf. Aria? Aria, what's wrong? Can't. Breathe. I'm struggling to draw in enough air. My back hurts so much, I don't know how much longer I can. Don't tell me. The stone? Damn it. In an instant, the demon lady launches herself across the room, shattering the window as she jumps through it. The pain in my back seems to dissipate immediately. <sighs> I can breathe again. Just in time to hear footsteps in the hall. Mum's woken up. Arya? What is going on in here? And what happened to the window? Does she sleep in her apron? This horned lady. This thing. It came out of a stone. This... A demon attacked us and... Grandpa had this stone, see? Magical spell and then she... Mum's face turns completely red. That's enough, Arya. For the love of God, you're old enough to know better. And Melody, I expected far better from you than Arya. But... Not another peep out of either of you until I get this sorted out. Go to your room. Now. We run back to my room as fast as possible. What was that? I don't know. You're supposed to be the supernatural expert. What the heck just happened? She's clutching the book close to her chest. Is it glowing? All I remember is I held up the book and it released that light. When I looked up, you were both hurt. That pain from before, it felt like somebody forced hot coals on my back. I don't remember getting hit by anything. And even if I did, why don't I feel anything now? That girl, where did she come from? And just what is she? Well, that's all the time I have for now. I hope you're interested in seeing where this story goes, because we've just released a demon. How dumb can we get? <laughs> so I'll see you guys later. Bye bye!